Welcome to the fascinating world of selection and evaluation. Have you ever wondered why some animals have certain traits or why some species are better suited to their environment than others? Well, you are about to find out. In this level, A-level student title, we are going to explore the amazing process of selection and evaluation. Simply put, it's all about how life changes over time. From tiny bacteria to massive whales, every living thing has a story of adaptions and survival to bring. So get ready to dive into the exciting world of selections and evaluation. Without further ado, let's get into it. Selections and evaluation can be divided into three criteria natural selection, stabilizing selections, and directional selection. Natural selection is the process where individuals with advantageous traits for the environment are more likely to survive, reproduce, and pass on those traits to their offspring, leading to an increase in the frequency of the traits in the populations over time. Meanwhile, stabilizing selections is like nature's way of saying, if it is thin, broke, don't fix it. This happens when the environment stays pretty much the same. So individuals with average traits are favored because they are well suited to that stable environment. Meanwhile, Directional selections is like nature saying times for a change. It kicks in when the environment shifts, favoring individuals with traits at one extreme of the spectrum. So, if the environment gets colder, for example, animal with thicker fur might be favored over those with thinner fur. Directional selection may result in evolutions. Let's move on to the sickle cells, anemia, and malaria. The similarity is divided into three categories. One is more on genetic base, second, more on hemoglobin mutations, and third, more on geographical distribution. Both sickle, anemia, and malaria influenced by genetic factors. And in terms of hemoglobin mutation, sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation in the hemoglobin gene. Meanwhile, malaria is caused by the plasmodium parasite, which infect red blood cells. And in terms of geographical distribution, both diseases are prevalent in regions where malaria is endemic. Let's look into the differences. Sickle cells anemia and malaria. The cause sickle cells anemia is by genetic mutation, affecting hemoglobin productions. Meanwhile, malaria is caused by a parasite transmitted through mosquito bites. And the symptom for the sickle cells anemia leads to chronic anemia, pain, and organ damage. Meanwhile, malaria causes fever chills, and flu-like symptoms. And for the homozygous effect, for the individual homozygous for sickle cell traits have sickle cells anemia, while individual homozygous for normal homoglobin are more susceptible to senior malaria. For the heterozygous effect, for the individual heterozygous for sickle cell traits have some protections against malaria, but do not typically experience symptoms of sickle cells anemia. While individual heterozygous or other hemoglobin variants may have varying degrees of protection against malaria. That's all for today's presentation. Thank you for your support. And please don't forget to subscribe to Johnson Hill YouTube channel. And 
I hope you all the best in your studies. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>